Guys, it's Josh from Traction NYC. You're about to get hit with a lot of information, like bam, bam, bam. Listen, if you have any questions on the watches, you have anything you want to do, you make sure you comment, comment your questions. I'll reply back, or you make sure you DM me. Enjoy the video. I'm going to go over some beginner watches that are great for you to get into. First things first, when you're getting into your Rolex, you want to talk about your wrist size. You don't want a watch that's either too big or too small for your wrist. So the proper measurement for your wrist should be about 70 percent of your wrist should be covered for your watch right so my wrist is a pretty small wrist so i'm generally going to gravitate towards a 36 millimeter 36 millimeter refers to the size of the face of the watch right so when you're looking at watches make sure you remember the case sizes of the watch and how they look on you so we're going to take a look at how this watch looks on my wrist and this covers about 70 percent of the surface area on the top of my wrist so 36 millimeter is just the perfect size. And there's also preference of the person to each his own. If you do want to go smaller, thinner, or if you do like the bulkier look as well, most of you guys that are starting out are going to fit a 36 millimeter, right? So this is a good starting point. Now, when you're looking at Rolexes to start off in, you really need a budget about at least four to 5,000. When you're looking at one of these higher end timepieces, for yourself now one of the benefits is is that these watch pieces last forever so that 5,000 dilutes itself into the many years that you're gonna be enjoying the watch one thing to look out for when you're looking at the watch is what what parts are original now the only way to find that out is having a connection to a reputable person that actually sells the watch whether it's with us at tracks or someone else and knowing a reputable watchmaker the term is called a watchmaker, the person that's able to kind of look at the watch, check everything that's wrong with it, be able to make repairs, and kind of let you know what's up with your watch. But if you go with a reputable source, you won't even have that issue, like us at Trax NYC, right? I want to look for the beginner watches, a Datejust. Now we have two different types of Datejust that we could go with in terms of the style. These are our entry level watches. If you have that budget range of four to 5,000 and even upwards closer to six, right? We have the two styles of bands, which is the Oyster Band and we have the Jubilee Band. And now we can also take it one step further to the stainless steel models. So for this one, I have a stainless steel Jubilee, right? This is a Jubilee Band. This is an Oyster Band that we have. Now, if we look at this stainless steel one, I want to go over the bezel types. This is a smooth bezel where it doesn't have that. And this is Rolex's famous fluted bezel. Now, let's go over the tiers, right? So generally, an Oyster Band will be a little bit cheaper than a Jubilee Band, right? Generally, a smooth bezel will be cheaper than a fluted bezel. Now, with these types of models, there are certain years and there's certain conditions of the watch that you should be looking for. A good sign that you want to look for is the stretch on the band. It's not the best indicator, but it definitely is a good one. This is a very mint condition band right here. So even though it's older, it's barely been polished. Now, if it's been polished, what you're going to start seeing is a band that has a little bit more give. So this slack a little bit more than the one on my left. So my right one, this stainless steel Jubilee, slacks a little bit more than this one right here. This is still very acceptable and very, very healthy, right, for a watch. So now that you've found a watch that's in good condition, I'm gonna take a look around, right? No major dents, no major scratches, the band is good. I wanna look at the type of crystal that I'm getting, a good sign for a watch that is in its newer year is a type of crystal. So let me put this down right here real quick and let me show you two different types of crystal that I have. So I have two similar watches. Now to an untrained eye, these two look pretty much the same. But to a trained eye, I know that these two Rolexes are different models. And how would I be able to know that? So one, I'm gonna look at something like this crystal. This is a plastic crystal. So if the camera can zoom in a little bit, you're able to tell that this is a plastic crystal and this is a sapphire crystal. Rolexes started using sapphire crystal in the late 80s, early 90s. So that's how you know that this is still somewhat of a newer watch. Now, if I look on the side of the case, I'm gonna see this watch has holes where 
the bracelet of the watch is attached, I'm gonna see holes on the side of the case. So I know that this is an older watch. Now on this one right here, we're gonna see that there are no holes on the side of this case, right? So I know this is a newer watch and it also accommodates with the Sapphire Crystal as well, right? Now let's go over the prices of these two entry level watches. At my store today, just for you guys that are watching this video, I can let this go at 5,000. Now this is the one that has the holes and the plastic crystal. This one, a little bit newer, a little bit more mint condition. This one, I can let go for 6,500, right? So those are the two differences in types of the condition and the year. So that's a, these are great starter pieces. I say they're great because they're very movable, very liquid. If you want to get out of them, I'll always buy them back, not just me, any other dealer. I know a lot of people are worried about whether or not their Rolexes come with some type of paperwork from Rolex. Generally, on these older watches, that Rolex papers don't necessarily matter in terms of the resale value. The papers are a value on its own. So for an example, if I have a Rolex, I'll charge for this one, like I said, 5,000. If I gave you the original box that came with it, I'll charge you $300 more for, for the box, right? If it came with the papers, usually I'll pay about $500 more if it came with the papers, right? So you have more value in terms of different categories that come or parts that come with the Rolex sale in terms of the box value is 300, the paper value is 500, but it doesn't diminish the actual value of the watch. So even if you buy a watch without papers, again, get it checked out, get it from a reputable source, get it checked out by a watchmaker, you, you will still be getting a banger watch at a decent price. If you have about an eight or nine to $10,000 budget and you want a Rolex sports model that's in mint condition, let's say for an example, a sub, a sub is a great entry level sports model for Rolex. I'm gonna show you two types and I'm gonna show you the value that you can get for having that budget from about eight to $10,000, right? So to show you the difference is, I'm gonna start off with this sub and I'll bring out this one as well. From far away, they all look like the same, but I'm gonna go over the key differences that change the price on these in terms of a consumer. And I'm gonna go with this one right here, right? So if you have a good eye off the bat, you'll know that these two on my left hand don't have a date on them or a date wheel next to them versus this one, you'll see the famous Rolex Cyclops glass that shows the date, right? So this date itself is a price difference about 2000 to 2500. So you can still have a Submariner, right? That looks fairly the same, but the price difference is $2,500 to move up to this range, right? Just for the date wheel. Now these two, without the date, I wanna focus on this real quick. Same thing, relatively the same. You may not notice it, but the one on my right hand has a ceramic bezel, and the one on my left hand is non-ceramic. Again, an experienced person who deals with a lot of these watches are able to tell and give you that information, especially also one way you could tell is by the year of the watch. This is a 2005 watch, and this watch is a 2018 watch where they started doing that. One thing I also wanna go over on these watches is the buckle, right? Key differences. You'll notice that on the older watch, we have one of the vintage buckles, and on the newer models, we have uh, a newer buckle as well, right? If you're interested in a Rolex Submariner at a really good deal, you can get one without papers. Again, this is about 15 years old, 15, 16 years old watch, but they're meant, they're meant to last 60, 70, 80 years and outlive you to be able to pass on. You can get something like this for $9,000. So you could be under the $10,000 range for a really good condition Rolex Submariner. It looks the same as one of the newer ones. There's those small key differences um, if you're really worried about that between the newer and older ones. Um, some people do, some people don't, but you can really, really get a nice entry-level Submariner for, for that range. If you want to move up to the newer ones, right, you can move up to the newer ones for about 10500 so you're just slightly over that $10,000 when you're going for the newer subs without the date as well. And if you want one with the date, like I have over here, you're looking at about a $2,500 difference, so you're going to start looking at close to 13000 right? Now, if you get one sub without the box or without the paper, you can bring the price down where you can still get 
a really, really nice sub, but with the date, you could get this down all the way to probably 11,000, 11,500 without the box and without the papers, right? Um, so again, the paperwork, the card, the box has its own resale value. It doesn't hurt the individual value of the watch itself. I still buy watches like this all day without the box, without the card, not a problem at all. Once you go ahead and start off with something like this that we went over, if you hold this for about one or two years, you save a little bit, about four or 5,000 on top, you're more than welcome to bring this back to me or to most likely pretty much any jeweler or watch dealer. You could bring them back. This still holds value, add some cash on top and upgrade to a newer, right? So that's pretty much the watch game, right? You want to get a, you want to get an entry level at a good price, wear it out, enjoy it for one or two years, add some money on top, and keep upgrading over time until one day you end up with a piece like this. Now, the interesting thing about watches is that because of inflation, most of the time, if you get into a good price, you'll end up making a couple of hundred on your watch. For an example, if I buy this. At 5,000, maybe two years from now, it, it'll value would go up to about 5,500 or 5,600, depending on the watch market. Historically, the watch market has gone up every single year. So you're in for a treat when you're getting into this game. Besides our beginner Rolexes that we have, we have a lot of other Rolexes. So if you're someone who has a little bit more of a watch collection and you see anything here that you like that you also want to ask questions of, Again, please do not hesitate to contact me, contact Tracks, Air Call, contact one of our jewelers, and we will answer any questions you have, no problem.